Great. Welcome, Thank Peter. You very much. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice to be here. Um, very quickly, I'll try and run down um, how I got onto my journey of, of learning the system. Um, I wasn't deliberately trying to teach myself the system. I just wanted to know certain answers to certain questions. And it all began in the very early 90s when I got uh, my first computer and I got connected to the Internet. And then I could start researching stuff. Basically, it started because I wanted to improve my paperwork. So if I was dealing with corporations, businesses, um, I just wanted to get better at writing my own documents and sending it off to them. Because back then, there was no such thing as emails or anything like that, or texts. And you shouldn't be using emails and texts today. It's just still being written. So I just wanted to teach myself that. So I started learning the legal system. And it quickly dawned on me there was something that was very wrong with it. And it's not law. That's something I found out later on. So then I discovered what law was, and then I discovered how court should work, uh, and then I discovered a whole load of things where the government has been lying to us. Um, I did research the man-made global warming thing, which is a complete fraud, so I, I researched that. Um, but yeah, everything that the government was saying, or basically what was on the TV was lies. Everything I looked into, I found the truth. And eventually, over about a 30-year period, I actually discovered the truth behind the financial system, that we don't use money. We use what is called legal tender, and it's based on debt or bonds. And we, the people, on an individual basis, are actually the creditors for this monetary system. But then we're tricked into becoming the debtors. And we can get into that in a bit if you want. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. So you're, 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 you're learning about this and we're studying this a long, long time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so explain to us a little bit, okay, from the very beginning, right? When we're born. Mm. right what happens with us and a lot of people are going to get probably shocked about this when we explain this but it's actually all facts yeah and you can go and look at into this yourselves if yes. you know where to look a lot of this has been hidden from people and as they say probably one in a million people will actually discover this so the people that watch this have an opportunity now to a lot of people that watch our shows uh, have discovered the fiat scam of what's going on with the monetary system and they understand that the money is broken. Oh, yeah. Now the people have an opportunity to find out about the system, the whole system, or what's really going on. Mm -hmm. So, no worries. I can start off with the very beginning. Now, everyone can actually research this. You do not have to take my word for it in any way. In fact, I would say that to everybody out there don't take the word of somebody. Go and research it. This is what I do. When I listen to someone, I go, that's interesting. That's the sales pitch. You've got my interest. And then I will then go off and research it for myself and see if that information is correct. And then I will use it. And everyone should do that. By the way, research is not talking into your mobile phone and asking a question, all right, and then getting an answer. That's not research. You've got to do the digging. You've got to put the time and effort into it. So some of this you can research yourself, and it's quite easy. A lot of it is to do with the language that people do not understand. So let's deal with the hospital. If you end up in a state hospital, first of all, you'll find yourself in a ward. And you go, okay, then what does ward mean? Ward means a place that you are in where you have given up your power of attorney. Okay, so that's straight away, that should give you an alarm bell because you go, what am I doing in this ward? Well, you've given up your power of attorney and someone else has authority over you. So prison ward, hospital ward, voting ward, all these, whenever people can go and look this up. So first of all, there's a problem. So you end up in these hospitals, all maternity hospitals uh, controlled by governments are in fact what is called foundling hospitals. And you go, okay, what does that mean? So I'll get into that. So foundling is a place that people go to discard things they no longer want and they give it away. So I don't want it anymore. And then people, other people can collect it, okay? Now, in this terminology, foundling is normally where um, orphans are abandoned, children are given away, and then scooped up by um, the church, nuns, that sort of stuff, okay? So it's a foundling hospital. So you go, okay, what's going on here? Well, you've got to learn how to read and realise what's going on because when the, your baby is born, you'll be asked to register it. And you go, okay, what does register mean? Register means handing over authority. You're handing over something, something of value. You're handing it over to someone else. And now they have the controlling interest. So you can go and look that up. So what's going on? Well, what they're actually doing is very, very deceptive. But what's happening is, is you are filling out the hospital's forms. 
Now, whenever you fill out a form, remember, you are now operating in someone else's jurisdiction because it's their form. So if they give you a form and you start filling it out, you're contracting. They have full control over the form, and they also have the control of what the terminology means on that form. And this is where people fall foul of the system, because they make an assumption of what's written on the form, and they think it means something, when in fact it means something completely different. So you're filling out the form. This is referred to as uh, putting the name into form. So you will be asked to fill in the form with naming the baby. I'm using air quotes here for those who are just listening with no video air quotes, but this is not what's going on. What's going on is the hospital is actually creating a brand new legal name that is referred to as the legal persona. And you are being tricked. The mother and the father is being tricked and they think they are registering the child's name. They're not. So when the baby is born, the baby is given um, four name, uh, given it has given names, not four names, and has a family name and not a surname. Okay, but on the form it will say four names and it'll ask for surname. Surname means surety name. So straight away, you, what's going on? Surety means that you are the collateral for someone else's debt. So if something goes wrong with the debt, you are on the hook to pay it. So they're asking, what's the name of the surname? Everyone's using surnames today. Everyone's agreeing to be the debtor. So you fill out this form. There's other terminology in there. One, it, one of it will be, what is the maiden name of the mother? And you go, What's, why is that relevant? Okay, so you put in the maiden name. You go, what does maiden mean? Maiden means unmarried woman, unmarried. Fair maiden means that she is now reached the age to become um, married. Fair maiden. She's mm -hmm. fair to be married. Now, this entire system, what they're doing is they're stripping the protection of the woman from the man. Now, this, they do this through marriage because mm -hmm. the average person out there thinks they're getting married. No, you're not. You're entering into a corporate merger where the man and the woman is separated. In other words, the woman is no longer protected by the man's family name because what is supposed to happen is when the fair maiden gets married, she takes the family name of the man. And that name is her protection. Okay, so that woman is now, you know, say you marry Bob Smith, the House of Smith, that name, House of Smith, is her protection. And everyone else goes, okay, better leave her alone, okay, because she's protected by Bob Smith, okay? So marriage is a separation from the protection of the man and the woman. So the woman is no longer protected. She's separated. Um, what's actually happened is a corporate merger between the man's birth certificate and the woman's birth certificate with the state. This is why you need a marriage license. And you go, well, what does license mean? License means asking permission. So you're asking the permission from the government to get married. Well, that's a problem straight away because that's not how marriage works. Because there's only two people that should be asked in a marriage. First of all, the man asks the father of the fair maiden, her his intentions. And if the father gives blessing, says, yes, you can, you know, ask my daughter, such and such. That's the first question. The second one is the fair maiden. She's asked the question. If she says yes, then that's her decision and that's how it's done. All right. So the state is getting involved here. So it's a corporate merger. So anyway, going back to this uh, birth certificate registration. The woman is putting her maiden name down for a reason because she is actually she doesn't she doesn't know this, but she's declaring that she's given birth outside of wedlock. So meaning the child is not protected by the man's name and there will be a box in there and the woman is called the informant. So she is informing the state through the ward of the hospital using registration that she's just given birth to a baby outside of wedlock and is now giving it away for adoption and that's what she's done and then what will happen is the um the registrar of the hospital will come along you can look this up you go what's a registrar doing in all of this so a registrar comes along signs it puts the stamp on it and that is the contract sealed the baby's foot is then usually covered in ink and pressed against another document that is considered a contract although it's not official until you are baptized, and we can get into that if we've got time. So that's another fake contract. So after that, the, the state now has control of the baby using the legal persona name that has just been created using the birth certificate. 
Now, this birth certificate is split. There's basically going to be three documents, all right? The first document is what the mother has signed. Using her signature, she's filled it in. That is the thing of value, and that is normally referred to as the birth notification form, all right? So that's the think of it like the deed. She's writing a deed. She's just given birth. She's the creator. Within their system of commerce, he who creates controls, or if she creates, she controls, okay? So whoever created the baby controls. She's created the document, which is the birth notification form, which is like a manufactured statement of origin regarding cars. Same thing. It's a deed. That deed is then used to create two certificates. One is called the uh, certificate of live birth, and the other one is called the birth certificate. Now, again, this is how these deceptive people do things. They will rearrange the syntax in a, in a sentence so it means different things. OK, so syntax means the arrangement of words. You rearrange words in a different way. It has a different meaning. So the certificate of live birth is operating at the national level. OK, and this is used to create credit in the child's name because a foreign situs trust has just been set up. It's been created on that birthday. Then there'll be another certificate created, which is the birth certificate. This is a corporation. This is the one you normally get. And that is become the debtor, all right? So what the government has done is they've split the name of the child into becoming the creditor and the debtor. So the government now has the ability to create credit out of thin air using the baby's name at the national level. This goes through the central bank of a particular country. Countries are corporations, got nothing to do with the land. And then this central bank will create what is called promissory notes, um, stuff like this, okay? This is called legal tender. These are operating in the lowest jurisdiction, which is the jurisdiction of the pauper or members of the public or citizen or civilian. And that's what we end up using. But this basically is a note of debt that we are tricked into paying back. And this is where your tax comes into play. So a lot of people think that you pay tax to pay for government services. Well, this is not true. This is not how tax works. Everything that the government does, everything, including power generation, oil, gas, building the roads, building hospitals, everything is paid for using your trust, using your name. You're the creditor. You paid for it already. Now, what goes on is that this creates a debt. This is what is referred to as the national debt. Everyone can look this up. National debt. There it is. The national debt is the credit that the government owes us on an individual basis but they don't want to pay this back to us because they have no money they can't pay it back they've also got another problem they have to service this debt you know what does that mean well within uh, the debt uh, industry there's always interest to pay on the debt until the debt is settled so where does the government get the interest to pay on the debt our taxes so every time you pay tax what you're actually paying is the interest on this debt and you are servicing the debt, but you're the creditor. That's mm -hmm. insane. You're the creditor. You said to the government, well, you didn't know you did this, but you said to the government, yeah, use my credit, build the hospital. But then I end up paying interest on my own credit. What? That's not how it works. They're supposed to pay me the interest because they owe me the debt. It's like taking out a credit card and then the credit card company paying you interest. <laughs> That's what the government's done. They've done this bait and switch nonsense. So what's happened is, is that the, the, uh, the birth certificate has been created and turned into, a, uh, into legal tender. Okay. Now you can look this up, but you'll yeah. find there is a QCIP number attached to your birth certificate. And you go, what's a QCIP number then? Well, within their legal system, within their system of commerce, um, a debt can be created, usually in the form of a bond, but it's got no value and it cannot be sold until it's been recognized as debt and a QCIP number has been applied to it. And then it's then sold on the debt market. So go and look that up. If people think this is a conspiracy theory, go and look up your Q QCIP number. And there you go. There's websites out there. I think what's one called uh, Fidelity, I think it is. And you can go and put your details. Yeah, the brokers, in. the brokers. People that be watching yes. this will be brokers and stuff like this that, that, that know me. You know what I mean? They're all over the financial system. So these people have access to try and find these QSIP numbers. Yes. 
we've got to get this information out, actually. I mean, you're absolutely right, is that, you see, within the truth movement, call it what you will, SFT movement, uh, Sovereign Freedom Truth Movement, there are people within YouTube, other platforms, warning us about fiat currency, the fact that it's going to collapse, it's a Ponzi scheme and all the rest of it, that's correct. They're warning us about the uh, national national debt and all this, that's correct. But they still don't know how the financial system actually operates. They don't know about the birth certificate. We've got to get this information out to them. You know, the the, the big players out there, you know, the, uh, uh, what's it, um, Mike Maloney of, of uh, Gold Money, for example, you know, we've mm-hmm. got to get this information out to them. Or a lot of people will see this. A lot of people that know me that that know about money and what is money will be seeing this, and and and, and it might click with them. You know what I mean? And they can go and search because they've got access to all these broker accounts and everything. A lot of these people have, and they can go and check these numbers if they can find the proper number, the proper QSIP number for themselves. Yes, yes, because there'll be. Let me see. There's just. I'm just going to try and do this from memory. But with your um, birth certificate, you'll have a ticker number. Um, there should be a QCIP number. And I think there's a fund number as well. So the ticket number, I think we know what, you know, ticket number is like uh, GLD, referring to gold or something like that. It says it's usually a bunch of letters. And that is the symbol of your um, your debt or birth certificate. So, is, yeah. It, it, that. Is, is that connected to, the, you know, when you're born? As well, and your weight. They say that you're you're, you're born and you, you have the value of the, your weight in gold. Yes, something like that. Yes, yes. This is how it works. So um, the way it works is that um, when they set this trust up, the Catholic Church, because it's basically the Vatican that runs this. They've been doing it for centuries. They technically run it. They control all country, uh, all countries. And I think we all know that the Rothschilds runs the central banking system anyway. So they're all in it together. So the way it works is when the baby is born, it is weighed and it is also measured and it's turned into a manifest. OK, so worth your weight of gold. What they do is for every baby that's born, let's say you're seven pounds, two ounces. So they'll take the value of seven pounds, two ounces and put that into trust for you. And now that's the beginning of it. Then they'll do other things as well. They'll say that you, every man and woman on this planet is entitled to 10 acres of land because we have dominion of the planet, you see, and the Vatican doesn't want to go against God. So the Vatican has said, yes, we know that everyone has dominion and everyone should have 10 acres of land. So they put the value of 10 acres land in the trust. Um, They'll factor some other things in there, who your parents are. Um, If they were a wealthy family, then they suggest that you're going to make more throughout your life so they'll put that in there but they put a whole load of assets like oil coal a bunch of all that up chuck it in there they'll come up with this magical number but normally these trusts when they're set up it's worth somewhere around when you're newly born it's worth about a million dollars but then when you come to uh maturity um it's worth about a hundred million because it's uh re-hypothecated Compounded, compounded, yeah, limit, that's yeah. it. That's the word I'm looking for. It's compounded, yeah. So it's worth a lot more. So by the time, because there's three ages within the, this system, age of, and it's multiples of seven. So age one to seven, you're an infant. Seven to fourteen, you're a minor. When you reach fourteen, that is considered an adult, as in biblical age. And then you've got the age of twenty-one, which is when you're supposed to claim your trust fund. And so, to, so yeah, so, so so those numbers, okay. Is that yep. connected to, so you're born and then around six or seven, you make your Holy Communion? First oh, of all, you're yes. baptized. Let's talk about those stages, right? You're born, then you get baptized mm-hmm. to whatever religion you go under. Yeah. So there's all different religions out there. There is. Yeah. But I just maybe because people might be looking at this, that are different religions. Okay. Yes. And they're saying, okay, because I'm not Catholic. Uh, that doesn't apply to me, but it's the birth certificate. It, it's the yeah, one that gets yeah. everybody. The first thing. Yes. Exactly right. In fact, I was going to suggest that because a lot of people say, well, I'm Muslim, I'm Sikh and all the rest of it. And I say, did you register your birth in a state hospital? And they go, yes, I did. Well, that's a Catholic name. You, you're under the Catholic church now. It doesn't matter if you're Hindu, Sikh, Muslim, whatever it is. If you registered your, your that birth certificate, it's under, the, it's under the authority of ecclesiastical law, which is essentially law of the church. So everyone has that name. And it says surname. They control it. So going back to the baptism, 
Now, this is where it gets a bit deep, all right? And this is where it gets a little bit satanic. Now, you can research this, you can look into it, but this is all tied to the Unum Sanctum. And you go, okay, what's that? Now, I'm going to simplify this. This is super simplified because it's much, much more complicated than this. But there's three crowns or three trusts within the Unum Sanctum. This is what the Vatican set up. This is what the Catholic Church has set up. And this is what they use to control you if you accept that jurisdiction. So the first crown was set up in 1302 by a pope. And basically, he was claiming all land. All right. So land was now under the or placed into trust into the under the control of the church. All right. Because it's all operating as a trust. So they don't violate the uh, God because they can't do that. They can't violate God because they'll go against God. So they put it into trust for you. So they put the land into trust. Well, that means you do not have the right to own land anymore. All you are is you have use of it, but the uh, the the church owns it. All right. That's the first crown. The second crown is the body. This is where they take your body. And you know, what does that mean? It says, well, they now own everything you could you create. All right, because you create everything through your body, all right? And you don't have rights at that time. You have you have nothing. You are basically a slave. That's the second crown of the Unum Sanctum. Then this is where baptism comes into play. The third crown of the Unum Sanctum is your soul. And they want the soul. And this is how baptism works. So the child is registered by your parents. They don't realize this. Okay, this is accepting the first two crowns of the Unum Sanctum by registering. So you've handed the child over. The child does not have the right to land and does not have the right to own anything. It's a slave. The birth certificate is created and the sole of your foot, this is why it's called sole, is placed upon the birth certificate document to set that up. Then when you are baptized, you are literally giving away your soul. You're, you're completing the contract. So at that point, the government owns your soul. They own you outright and they can control you at will. Um, and when you end up in their courts, and by the way, all courts are operating basically through the Vatican and in layman's terms, you are nothing. You have no rights, nothing at all, and they can do whatever they want to. And this is where the all caps name comes into play. Because when you go into their courtroom, you have to accept that all caps name. Otherwise, they can't act upon you because you have to accept the trust, you see. And that's how they get you. So you go into that courtroom and they'll say, Mr. They'll call you Mr. or Mrs. Or, you know, Mr. is a military or maritime title. And if you accept the title Mr. within their courtroom, it means you accept there's a trust and they have access to your trust. And then it depends on how the all caps name is written. But if your caps name is written, say the first part of your name is written in title case and then the last name is written in uppercase, that's like half all caps. That means that you've accepted the jurisdiction of the court where they can fine you and prosecute you for certain things, but they can't imprison you and they can't execute you. But if they use the all caps name, your whole name is in all caps and you accept that, it means they now have the right to imprison you and also execute you. So it's a satanic system. So that's base. I'll just give you the basics there. People can research this. Go and look. Go and look into it. Go and look. In fact, do an internet search, an image search, and find the, uh, the logo for the Unum Sanctum. See what you find. You'll, you'll come up and you'll see a shield and there'll be three crowns and you'll see two keys. Now, within these two keys, one is gold and one is silver. And you go, what, what, what are we doing with these keys? What's going on with all this? That is making reference to the bond. That is making reference to the birth certificate. Because in the olden days, the way it used to work, if you wanted to create a bond, you'd go to the bank, write your bond out, seal it, have it witnessed, and you put it into a box. The bank would have one key made of gold, and you would have the other key made of silver so that would be locked and that box could not be opened unless you had two keys and then you normally give that silver key to an administrator who can then initiate a promissory notes based on the bond and it re it represents the trust and also this is why you know when you turn 21 and you're supposed to get a silver key everyone gets on mm -hmm. the you're 21 there's your silver key that's what it's for You've just been given the silver key to your trust fund. You're supposed to drop down to the the the, uh, the bank, open the box, get your hundred million dollars worth of gold and all the rest of it. People still do this, but they don't know the meaning behind it. Yeah, so, for, for, for when you turn twenty one, they say that you get the key of the house. It's not the key of the house. It's the key of the box. The key of the of the bond. Correct. The trust. The key of the trust. Key of the but trust. It's all being 
manipulated and we've been taught completely nonsense. Correct. Correct. Everyone, no one questions it. Well, I do, because I thought there was something very, very wrong. <laughs> so I started researching a long time ago and I thought, this doesn't add up. You know, I tell you what, here's something you everyone can do. Everyone can play along at home. If you think, if you still think this is a conspiracy theory, get yourself one of these out of your pocket and you'll find very tiny writing under there. And it's a promise to pay. You might have to get a magnifying glass because they print it so small because they don't want you to actually know about it. But it's a promise to pay. And you go, well, what do you mean promise to pay? How can this be a promise to pay? I thought it was money. I thought it was worth something. It's a promise to pay. It's got a value on it. There's a signature on there and there's a date on there. And there's a promissory note. And you can look this up. You can look, go and look, go and look it up. Learn how promissory notes work, and you'll find that's what this is. So, not conspiracy theory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all there. It's but all there. as we know, people haven't got the time or don't make the time to learn about this. The same. If you take the time to learn about the financial system, what's going on with our, which our money, you will reveal the truth behind the devaluation of the currency. And what's going on and how it's making us poorer and poorer and poorer. And yeah. just to keep it simple, when they print more money, means that they devalue the currency. That's the right. value of the currency goes down. The more they print, the more the value of the currency goes down. That's why uh, for the last couple of years, we're seeing everything go up in price, our goods and services, because the value of the currency is worth less and less every year, the last couple of years. Yes. They've printed approximately 50% of the European currency, the euro, in the last, since 2020. And they've probably done that in the UK as well, around that, oh, yeah. and in Americas. You know I mean? But if you're in Turkey, if you're in other countries like Turkey, Turkey devalued by 40% last year, in one Damn. year. And to date, Steve, I got the data last week, in the first quarter of this year, they have devalued by 75% mm -hmm. already in the first three months. It's insane. But here's the thing. They have to devalue it because it's a Ponzi scheme. You see, the problem is, is this Ponzi scheme of debt is debt based, right? So here's the way it works. So when one of these is printed out of thin air, this is the first one ever printed. Let's pretend this is the first five, po five pound note. Well, this is a promissory note with interest. So while it's in circulation, interest has to be paid on this because it's a note of debt. And that's where your taxes come in. So you pay tax to pay the interest on this. But then you go, well, where do I get the extra money from to pay this? Well, you've got to get another one, don't you? So you have to get another one so you can pay the interest on that. And you go, well, hang on a minute. We've got a problem, haven't we? Because now we've just created this one. Where do we get the interest? Oh, well, you're going to have to print another one. But you can see what's happening because now all three needs interest. So now you've got to get another two to try and pay the last. And then you go, oh, that's not enough. And then you end up and it multiplies and it multiplies. And it gets to a point where... The people can't cope anymore because the way that this Ponzi scheme actually works is every time people sign for new credit, whether it's a credit card, whether it's a car insurance or whether it's a, um, mortgages, for example, you are creating new credit out of thin air. That's what you're doing. Now, the government was trying to get everybody to borrow as much money as possible. That's why the interest was so low. Because if you get the interest payment so low, it's almost like, well, why don't I borrow money? It's so cheap to borrow now. But people are tapped out. They can't borrow anymore. They're maxed out. So the government's got a problem. It says, well, what do we do? We've got to keep this Ponzi scheme going. So they do quantitative easing. So quantitative easing is they now just start printing this without the people signing it. And it's just, here we go. Ooh, hoo, hoo. And they just keep printing it. And it's exponential. It gets worse and worse and worse. Now, the thing with this is that <laughs> every time you print this, you get, you've got to get more. So it goes up and up and up and up. But you have to pay the interest. And this is where the government is really struggling now. Because they can't really print this to pay the interest on this. Because once they do that, then the whole thing collapses because there is no confidence in the currency anymore. And that's when a currency collapses, right? So to make these still have value, the people still has to pay the interest on it to give it value, to give it stability, right? And as long as everybody keeps paying tax on this, it keeps going. But everyone's tapped out now. They're paying too much tax. So what the government is now doing is fining everybody. 
This is where all these so-called new rules are coming out, new mm -hmm. laws, you know, ULEs and 20 mile an hour speed limits. Why do you think 20 mile an hour speed limits are here? Do you don't think the, the government is, you know, worries about our safety? No, he wants more speeding tickets. Oh, and by the way, when you do get a speeding ticket, not only does the government make a thousand pound on the fine, but they securitize it and make a hundred thousand pound on the paperwork. That's why speeding tickets are so lucrative. This is why the police are focused on the traffic all the time, because that's good money. You could go around nicking people. Oh, you were using your mobile phone for two seconds while you were sat at a red light. Boom, here's your ticket. Oh, we just made 100 grand out of that. That yeah. is why the police are getting brutal, because they're going around now issuing tickets left, right and centre, and everyone is getting fined to death. But this is... Uh, this but is the a thing about it is, the men and women that are issuing those tickets, they don't even know what they're really no. doing. They're just saying, I'm doing my job. Yeah. They don't even know. They don't even know the reason behind it. What, what, what yeah. What's really going on? So, like, people really need to learn about this stuff and understand that, you know, I mean? I'm harming other people and I'm creating more debt. Yes. Yes. Every policeman out there is now engaging in what is called legal entrapment and racketeering. Now, they can say, I, oh, I didn't know. Doesn't matter. That won't save you. You can't say, "Oh, I was just doing my job." No, that's not going to save you. You're still liable for your actions. Yeah, exactly. So you know, it is, it is. So they can't be saved. You know, all they've got to do is stop doing it and and quit and walk away. But if they carry on, they are implicit in the crime of extorting money from people. And as more and more people start waking up, and it's now hundreds of thousands, not millions of people globally have now realized just how corrupt the police are. Oh, uh, when that snaps and the people that really get angry, I would hate if you as a policeman, because you ain't going to live very long, I don't think, because people are going to start looking you up. Yeah. You know, I've seen, so even seen that, it, 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 it's, it's It's not even to be like focusing on the police. A lot of these civil service jobs, all yeah. the people, the men and women that are in there have been conned themselves and they've yeah. been just going along with the narrative that what they've been told by they be and here's the thing okay they, they, they say they've been told by say something like the nhs or the hse which we have in here which is uh it, it's just a corporation it is right how does a corporation speak to you and tell you that thing <laughs> exactly right. that's the thing <laughs> they say the corporation or the council it, it has to do this. Okay. How does the council speak? It's a dead entity. Yes. Okay. It's a man or woman that has told you that, that has probably misinformed you. Maybe they've been misinformed as well by their superior. Yes. Nobody knows what's going on. It's, as I explained to you b b b before, and I said, if one in a million people figure this out, they'd be lucky. That is true. That is true. Um, this is not easy to figure out. There's other people that have been figuring it out as well. Not, you know, I'm on my personal journey. In fact, for a long, very, very long time, I thought I was like a crazy person because no one else knew. And I was like, it was a weird feeling. But after 2020, because so many people have woken up already and they want to know this, there's thousands of people who know this. Now, the good news is it took me 30 years to research all this. I've condensed it down. I've done books, online courses. You could do an 18 month, you know, focus on my work. I mean, in 18 months, you up to speed. You mm -hmm. don't have to spend thirty years anymore. Yeah. yeah. So the learning. Have you got a book? Have you got your book there? Do you want to just flash your book yeah. as well? Oh, no. I think you oh, wrote two or three books, did you? Yeah, I've got a few. Oh, the shame of of uh, promoting my book. So I know. <laughs> yeah, you know I man. So which book is that now? Is that your newest okay. one? Because yeah, this I, is I, I, I bought one of your books as well. I have it I've got, here. Um, I've got this one as well. Oh yes, that's the Sovereign Project Handbook. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so is that your first one, was it? Yeah. Well, this one was my first one. Um, okay, I've start with the first one. one. Okay, the system. Yeah, Death by a Thousand Cuts. So I, pub I published this in 2017. I started writing in about 2010, and this okay. goes through, um, you know, gaslighting, fiat currency, um, economy, profit. It's the it, you know what a Ponzi like a Ponzi scheme. There's a chapter on a Ponzi scheme, what that is. Because i tell you what I wrote this, is because I started chatting with people in normal conversation, and I was saying things like, um, well, you do know that this is fiat currency and it's a Ponzi scheme. And then it goes, what's a Ponzi scheme? I don't know. So then I'd have to explain what a Ponzi scheme is. So this is this explains everything. 
this is your manual on how to write notices and affidavits and all the rest of it. And then we've just done another one, which is this one, which is the delving deeper into the abyss and we get, get deep in how to how the courts work, Unum Sanctum stuff, all that sort of stuff. So, And I'm in the middle of writing my fourth book, so uh, might have that done for next year. <laughs> Amazing. Nice. 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 Uh, so let's let's touch base a little bit on, on 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 this. So we're saying we are born, okay, yes. unknown to us. Uh, we there, there, there's a birth certificate created by our parents. They think it's for the good, but it's actually registered. And they give away ownership of us to the state because yes. anything you register, you give away ownership of. Correct. Then the next step is like a baptism. What? So that's when you go into a religion, isn't it? And explain a little bit about religion, what it actually means, oh, yeah. how that word comes. <laughs> yes, religion. That's where the word comes from. So, you know, what does that mean? It means to create a legion of followers. And when you say re, it means to do it again. So what you're doing is you're recreating a legion of followers. So a religion or religion is normally taking um, followers from a failed religion and then you're scooping them up and then bringing them into yours. So that's what a religion is. And as you know, I run the Sovereign Project. And when I try and do, there's nothing wrong per se with a religion if you use it for good. You know, if you want to be Muslim or if you want to be um, Hindu, whatever, it's not a problem. But don't be a follower, all right? Because within the Sovereign Project, I try and teach people, especially men, to be sovereign, which means you don't follow anyone, Okay. You can agree with the teachings of a religion. It doesn't mean you have to follow it. It doesn't mean you have to have religious leaders that tell you what to do and control you. Because that's what the church used to do. right? You had to pay penance to the church, which means handing over money. And if you didn't do that, you were beaten and whipped and all the rest of it, you see. And there's still that sort of stuff's going on today with certain religions. So there's, I don't know, pros and cons to religion. Don't be a follower um don't follow a leader don't go looking for a leader i don't have any leaders at all a man shouldn't okay uh, you know a man should have dominion of his own house that's how it works you know so i have dominion of my house i have no there's no one above me no one can tell me what to do i make the law in my jurisdiction within my dominion that's how it works i have my own set of rules my own set of laws and I will work and cooperate with other men who have equal standing to me. So they are king of their dominion. I am king of my dominion. We are equals. We can cooperate. And that, by the way, is the strength of, I don't like using the word society, but I'll say culture instead. That is the strength of culture. Good culture is from strong men who hold their house using their name, and they will say, I will protect women and children under my name. Any woman and child under my name is protected, and I will die to protect them. You get a culture of men, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of men, all with that attitude, that's, that's indestructible. You can't break that. And within that, you can then create stable families. You'll get loyal women. They will marry a stable man and create good children. And these children will then grow up to be the next generation. And the people behind government fear that the most. They don't want that. That's why they're trying to demonize masculinity. Mm -hmm. Right? If you're a man. It's new thing that they're doing now, isn't yeah. it? This whole new thing. You know, I mean, that they're coming on board and they're just saying that they're talking about women's rights, but they're actually taking away their rights. Yes. That's, it's completely opposite what, what they're doing, what they want to do. Yes. It's the exact opposite. You're absolutely right. And people can't see it. I mean, talk about the uh, the feminist movement. All right. The feminist movement was actually set up by the Rockefellers. They funded it over 100 years ago. And you go, why would they do that? Well, the thing is, before then, it was mainly men who worked. And it was only 50% of the population who paid tax. Well, they wanted to tax the other half of the population, the women, because most women didn't work. They stayed at home, looked after the house looked after the kids, that sort of stuff. So then they got the women into the workforce. So now they can tax two lots of people. But then their third plan is then they could bring in the fiat currency and do wage compression, which is what we're all suffering now. Because what's happened is if they just had the man working and he was funding his, his house and his family and they tried wage uh, 
compression then, the man would have noticed and goes, what's going on with my wages? And I can't make ends meet. So that's why they got the women involved. So they were started to work. And now the average family, both parents have to work, right? You can't, a man can't support his family anymore. And what's even worse is if you combine the man's and the woman's salary together, it's not even half of what the man was earning back in the 50s. And that is why people value of it. Yeah, the yeah. value of it. What a good the value. value. Yes, the value. not the nominal, the value. Yeah, the, the value. The, yeah. And that's and value. that's the thing as well. A lot of people look at the number or the price yes. of something. They don't understand value. It's two completely different things. Absolutely correct. I mean, I can give you an example. Let's say, let's say I've got two envelopes. One envelope has um a hundred dollars in it. And the other envelope has $1,000 in it. And I say to you, which one would you like? And you say, well, I'll have the 1,000 because 1,000 is more than 100. But if I turn around and say, well, no, that 1,000 is in today's value and that 100 is from the value from the 1950s, which one do you want? I'm having the 100 because that 100 could almost buy you a house and that 1,000 today barely covers one month's mortgage payment. Mm. That's the difference between uh, nominal or numeral uh, figures and value that's the difference yeah 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 yeah. definitely okay yeah. and then from the religion we were talking about the re touch on religion a little bit how they suck us into religion these legions legions <laughs> really <right>. yeah <laughs> uh and then moving on then from other things that they do then the, the, the different other ceremonies that they do say from your communion then your confirmation oh yeah you touch on them a little bit I can. Now, I have been digging into that a little bit. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm an expert on it, and I haven't been able to verify some of the information that I've found, and I do like to verify it. So some of the things I find, they're interesting, and then I like to find different sources to back it up. That's one of the ways I like doing my research. So, okay, this is what I know so far. The religion that most people think the... Um, the Vatican News is they think it's the Christian religion. It's not. Okay. So what's actually going on is they have, they worship a different set of gods. Um, Baal, Moloch is another one. Uh, there's a couple of others, which I can't quite remember at the top of my head. And what they've actually done is they've also removed the uh, name of God or the word of God from the modern day Bible. So people think the modern day Bible has got the Christian uh, god in it because no it hasn't um it's being doctored um there is a form of pig latin within modern day bibles uh pig latin is where all caps are used but they're different font sizes and what they tend to do this is the little trick that they do is to split a word up like you using pig latin so the word lord for example in the uh, the bible will have a capital l and then capital O R D, but they're in a smaller font size. So what that has the what that's done is split the word, so it doesn't say Lord at all. Um, so it's split up to mean something else, and it's basically referring to their god Baal. All right, so they worship their Baal, their god Baal. Um, now I think it's Moloch, if I remember rightly, is the one where you sacrifice children. I think you might have to you know go and yeah. this up. Um, so it's all satanic. And there is also a within their religion, they because they worship Satan, okay, Saturn comes from Saturn, and there is this is that their their religion began because there's a symbol on the planet Saturn that looks like a box, and they worship the box. And you go, what does that mean? Well, what they do is within their religion, they like to trap your mind within a box they trap it in the box and if they can trap your mind in a box they can control you and that is effectively most people on this planet there's a population of around i don't know 7.6 billion 8 billion roughly um and about 90 percent of those people are trapped in the box their mind is in the box they can't escape it and they're in their own mind prison okay now this is actually highlighted in university because they like their symbolism. If you go to university, you are basically indoctrinated and your mind is placed into a box. And if you graduate, you actually wear the square on your hat to symbolize the box. And it means you have a closed mind. 
and you are now trapped. So this is their religion. This is what they believe. Now, one thing regarding their religion is they have to tell you what to do, or they have to tell you what they are doing. What they know. are doing. What, what they, they are, are doing. doing. Yeah. Yes. You see, even though they worship Satan, they still believe in God and they don't want to go against God because then God will destroy them. Um, so this is their entire system. This is why the system is so fragile. Their entire system is, is they will tell you what they are doing. And if you accept it, then you've given consent. And in their eyes, they haven't done anything wrong. So that's how their religion works. And they do so basically they, they they are still being honorable correct in the way they're doing it because they're telling us straight out that they're doing this yes yes and That's they fine. don't see any harm that correct. they're doing and maybe as well they don't see any harm because they're only doing it to persons because a lot correct. of these rules and regulations are not made out to men and women if you go and look at them get people should go and look at these things how they're written they're actually correct. made out to persons so what is a person Dead entity exists on paper. Exactly. So now you can see how the system works. You can begin to see why it's so fragile. It's a bluff. They're bluffing. So, yes, they have to tell you what they're doing, and they do. All right, sometimes they don't make it easy. Other times they do, and it's blatant. Mm -hmm. And people still do Like, for example, your car. I will tell people, you don't own that car. And you go, yes, I do. I, I paid for it. No, 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 no. You just bought a title to use it. That's all you did. You bought the V5. That's all you did. You didn't buy that Lamborghini or that Ferrari. And I'll even explain it to them. I'll even say, look, you do know you've got a license plate on the front of that car. And they'll look at me going out. Say, you do know what license means, don't you? It means asking permission. So why are you asking permission to drive it? I mean, I'll even go on and I'll say to them, why have you got a driver's license? If it's your car, who are you asking permission from to drive it? That's another massive scam, the driver's mm -hmm. license. And he even says it on the V5. If you look at the V5, it says registered keeper. And there's even, a, I know it says it in all caps, but it says this is not proof of ownership. I will show people that, the V5. I'll show it to them. And I'll say, look, that's all you've got. You're a registered keeper. And they still don't get it. And I'm like, yeah. Beyond, their mind is trapped in a box. They've lost the game. You've got to get out of the box. Yeah, that, that, that's one of the big things. You need to think outside of the box or you get do. out of the box. Definitely. Yes. And uh, but that only comes with time as well. And mindset shift as well. Oh, God. Yeah. You have to change your whole mindset. Like. As we said before, we started recording. This isn't for everybody. It's no. not for everybody at all. A lot of people are in the system. Mm. They're suffering. They, 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 they think let's get on about these things, protesting and oh. going out and demonstrating. I wish people would stop doing it. Okay, I get it. At least you... Uh, okay, let's give them a bit of credit. At least they're doing something, all right? Because there's a lot of people just playing Xbox, watching football, doing nothing, and they know something needs to be done. So, all right, you've got out, you've done some protesting, but that's a trap. Because, obviously, if you protest something, you accept the obligation. If you petition something, you accept the obliga obligation. You're done. You've lost at that point. And that's the trap of the system. A sovereign would never protest. A sovereign would never petition. A sovereign, a sovereign doesn't even vote. Voting's another trap. People don't yeah. know that. I mean, I mentioned yeah. before you vote. Just, just, yeah, explain a little bit about that. The vote being on that voting register. People think <laughs> because you have the right to vote, <laughs> you're actually it, it, it's it's completely different, isn't it? It's the opposite. Oh, it's the opposite. You're being trapped <laughs> if you're on that voting register. Exactly right. That. See, the, <laughs> the politicians do tell you because you're absolutely, they'll say register to vote. All right. So you go, oh, 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 registering. I'm handing over something, aren't I? Handing something over a value. And you go, what's going on? And then they'll say, well, you're going to register or vote in a ward. And you go, oh, as we mentioned before, if you find yourself in a ward, you're handing over power of attorney. So the, they're literally telling you, they're saying, would you like to hand over your power of attorney to us and then we will make the decision of who wins the election? And then you look at the form itself. Again, you're filling out a form, aren't you? So it's got nothing to do with you. They have control over it. And what does it say at the top? They'll say, use black ink. That's the ink for the debtor. Then it'll say, use ca all capital letters. <laughs> yeah. They'll even put boxes there for you to for do it. Do, 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 do. And people just do it. <laughs> they go, okay. 
So you use your black ink, <laughs> you do your all caps thing, <laughs> you sign it, and then they ask, you've got you've got to, this is the best bit, it's so it's hilarious. They'll put a box next to all the different parties and they'll say, mark it as an X, and you'll do it. Okay. And that is the signature of a simpleton. You've handed over a form to these politicians declaring that you're a simpleton, you don't know who to vote for, so you're telling them to make the decision for you. And people still vote. And I'm going, you're wasting your ink. <laughs> uh, it's, it's... But that being said, this scam has been going on for so long, hundreds yes. of years, if not thousands of years, they've been setting it all up. And it is hard to get your head around the whole thing. But it's not that hard. It's no. not that hard, honestly. It isn't. I mean, some of it's simple. You know, when I talk to a lot of people and I explain it to them, they go, oh, why didn't I see that? Some of it is that obvious, you know, and it's like, oh, my God. So some of it's not that that difficult. Yeah, some of the money stuff, trust stuff, let legal, I get that, you know, and sanctum stuff, okay, fine. But the rest of it, you know, registering, that's not difficult to understand. And people don't get it, you know. So, you know, the power of the signature, I explain that to people and people, they're signing all, all over the place, you know, signing petitions, signing this. I say, you're signing your signature away. You're giving it away and they're controlling that signature now and they're monetizing it. So, yeah, a lot of this is in your face. If people just learn how to read and understood the meaning behind words, you will see what's going on. And it's not that difficult, really. It takes a bit of effort, though, and a lot of people don't want to put the work in. I mean, you mentioned this earlier as well. Yeah, it's not for everybody. So I'm looking for people who want to be responsible. You've got to be responsible, first off. Um, you've got to be relatively smart or willing to learn. And you've got to be determined, right? So you've got to have strong character. Um, you've got to have your own set of principles. And you want to do the right thing. Now, unfortunately, I've just described somebody as very unique there's not many people like that most people are irresponsible don't want to do any work um they want everything done for them um they just want to be saved don't they they're waiting yeah. for somebody to save them or something you know what i mean people think that we're going to be saved by god or whatever <laughs> yeah or jesus or something or the government <laughs> or a new government yeah. or a new policy maker or a new council <laughs> oh I know. Take responsibility. That's what people need to do and start learning how to yes. protect yourself and your family. Because as this program is about, we talk about what is money, what is coming, and how to protect yourself. Yes. Yes. I mean, one of the things is start using your own paperwork. Just cut, cut all ties with the system. Don't use websites. Don't use emails. Don't use forms. Start using your own paperwork. The problem you've got is a lot of people are sort of waking up to common law, okay? And then they go off looking for other law, thinking they can be saved by other law. That's not how it works. Because if you go looking for other law, you'll find yourself in the legal system again, and you, you've, you're trapped. You mm. cannot gain your freedom using the legal system. It's impossible. Can't be done. So you need to stop using the legal system, and you need to start using your own law. Yeah. And, and just explain a little bit about the different types of law, because oh, yeah. we have law. Then you have something you mentioned, a common law. Right. Yes. And then we have like legal, which as far as on is the color of law. It's only the yes. color of law. So Correct. all these things under law are actually lower and lower and lower and lower. So just explain yes. that. Absolutely. Now, the thing with law. OK, law itself is basically beyond man's grasp. It's beyond our reach, meaning we can't change it. That's what law is. So, like, if I drop this pen, then gravity is going to go down. That's the law of gravity. I can't make the pen go up. That's beyond my reach. So a law is something beyond my reach. That's what a law is. So as soon as you start hearing politicians saying we've changed the law, you'll know they haven't. And they're actually talking about something else. Because you'll know, well, you can't change the law. You can't add to it. OK, you can't amend the law. That's not how it works. You can amend the policy within a legal contract, though. That's what they're saying. That is like you uh, mentioned earlier. It's color of law. 
Oh, now I know how the game is played. So you've got law at the very, very top. This is beyond man's grasp. Uh, we can't change. We can't go back in time and all of it. These things that we can't change, okay? Now, some people refer that to God's law if you're religious. Okay, or, fine. Or maybe like something like, you know, the the, the, the 12 commandments. Is it yeah. is based something like that? I know that's just what was made up, kind of. But the, yeah. the basics, thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal. The, like the, 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 the very, very basic. So you don't bring harm yes. to another man or woman. Correct. That is also within law itself. Um, so because and we have terminology for this, like murder. OK, so we go, OK, what does murder mean? Murder means taking another's life without right. So you did not have the right to do it. Now, clearly, if someone breaks into your house, you can shoot them. And that's fair game. That's self-defense. All right. So you did have the right. So it's not called murder. So this is why we have certain uh, terminology. That's why murder is against the law. No one can change that. Uh, theft is another one. You can't change that. Again, we know theft means taking something without right. Well, if I give something away, that's not theft. So that is normally referred to like natural law. It, this is law that you just know. A good person knows. We just know it. You know you shouldn't murder, you shouldn't steal, you shouldn't lie, and all the rest of it. Now, yes, the 12 Commandments is a religion that made reference to it, but the 12 Commandments aren't technically law unless you have followed that religion and you've agreed to operate within that jurisdiction. So, for example, you couldn't get the Ten Commandments and then apply them to a Hindu because a Hindu goes, well, that's not my religion. It's got nothing to do with me. Mm. That's, a, that's a different jurisdiction, mm. different dominion. Mm. So then you've got law within contract. I mean, you've got common law. We can touch on common law first, but common law is today. The modern day version of common law is still a corporate policy law. It's, it's co controlled by the Bar Association. All right. So the original common law, there's, there's a few different origins of it, but I'll go back 2000 years to ancient Rome. So ancient Rome developed common law and it was only applied to the commoners. Now, this is where we've got to understand what language is all about. The word common, common does not mean universal. It just means it's common to some people, but not others. So common law only applied to the common people, not the ruling class, because it didn't apply to them because they're the ones who wrote the policies. So a lot of people just went looking for common law, says don't do that because it's not yours. A lot of people are trying to use the Magna Carta, says don't use that. Um, you can test the system by using Magna Carta. That's not a problem, but don't apply it to yourself. Constitutions, another one. A lot of people could try and use constitutions, and that's not law either um, because you didn't write it. You didn't um, sign it. You weren't consulted. So someone else wrote that. So it's their law, not yours. So don't use constitutions. Constitutions are basically corporate policies. Um, countries, like we mentioned earlier, is a, uh, a, a corporation. It's not the land. So all these things are traps, and the sovereign would know this because the sovereign would go, I didn't write that constitution. I didn't write the Magna Carta. I didn't write that common law. It's nothing to do with me. So then we get into law within contracts. And this is what, what the dirty government are doing to us the trickiness now two people can enter into a contract and within that contract they can stipulate their law within that contract and they have the right to do that so if you've got bill and ben and they sign a contract and they say on a wednesday you've got to wear a yellow t-shirt that's their law they've agreed to it they've signed to it and that's it doesn't apply to anyone else so what the government is doing is they are setting up corporate jurisdictions and they are letting this contract with them by mistake we don't know we are but that's what we're doing and then they can apply acts and statutes and you go well hang on a minute why is it called an act well because it's <laughs> acting as law <laughs> yeah. it's all in the language <laughs> so if it's acting as law then it's not real law and then of course the statute is actually from a word statue a solid statue made out of stone or something like that. that's what it's referring to and if you go back to the history of that it's all to do with king nebuchadnezzar and this is where the um system of commerce began so people switched from trade because trade is between two living breathing sovereigns and then they switched the system a deceptive system called commerce um basically i'll let, I'll, I'll try and explain what's going on here this is religious again you've got what people sometimes refer to as the creator some mythical thing out there, okay, that's created everything, the universe, everything like that. 
And then you've got people who refer to gods and deities, right? Now, this is the deception of many churches, is that some people believe in the creator, some magical being that created everything. Now, a church could not control this mythical being, the creator, couldn't do that, because how could you? But what the church could do is create a god or deity in the form of a statue, okay, and then get people to worship the statue, and then they could control the statue because people worshipped it. You see, that's how it worked. That, and the, okay, the modern day version today is statute, which means people believe in the law, thinking it's a law, but it's controlled by someone else, and you fell into the trap. So that's why it's called statute today, and it's referring to a statue, which used to refer to a deity. It's a pagan religion, I believe. It was the pagans who discovered this, because they would make deities, statues, and people would worship it, and then they could control the deity and say, well, you've got to pay us money. And that's the trap of religion. That makes sense when yep. you explain it like that, like just basically, you mm -hmm. know, but there's a lot more that people need to, would, would need to learn about oh, it. Oh, uh, basically, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a minefield, I'd say. You yep. mean? Deep, 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 deep. Um, amazing. Amazing. Uh, let's touch base a little bit on, we were talking about the marriage. Oh, yes. What does marriage actually mean? And what do okay. they do when they trick us into signing that certificate or registering it that's right because <laughs> marriage isn't bad people want to show show their love and show their affection for each other but i think it's been hijacked a little bit oh yes oh yes massively it's been hijacked by corporations and by the way government is a corporation so they've done a bait and switch and people did not see the bait and switch now let me explain how a true marriage between a man and a woman actually works and then you can see the deception. Now, within a true marriage, a man and a woman, the way it's supposed to work is that, um, you know, a man and a woman would enter into courtship. OK, courtship, anything with ship on the end is referring to maritime law. OK, it's a relationship. OK, two people. Now, we've got to understand that any marriage is still a contract. Right? It's still a contract. OK, and there's nothing wrong with contracts as long as you know you're entering into one. So the man and a woman uh, court and uh, for passage of time now the way it's supposed to work is that a, a fair maiden we spoke about fair maiden earlier a fair maiden would go looking for what is called a husband now a husband is not someone who is married a man who is married it's actually a man with resources so a woman would try and find a good man a stable man with resources who was strong dependable had a good name and would look after her and protect her okay now they caught and then the man would then speak to the father of the fair maid and say, it's my intention to ask her for marriage. Now that is saying the passing the fair maiden over from one house to another. Okay. So the father is giving up the protection because the father always protects his daughter. By the way, he always does even throughout. It doesn't matter how old she's married, whatever. But the husband, the, the, the man, the father is saying, yeah, I'll pass my daughter over to a new house. So the way it happens is the far, the um, man asks a woman. The woman has the ultimate decision in this, okay? Everyone thinks, oh, this is um, sexism or sexist. No, it isn't. The woman gets ultimate choice. She picks the man. She's the one who says yes or no. The man gets down on his knee. This is the time he actually gets down and lowers his status below hers. She is now above him. The woman then says yes, okay, now, what this means is that the man gets first title. This is very important. The man gets first title of his house, which means his word is law within his house, and he's the protector, and he will die to protect his wife and child. Okay. Now, the woman, the wife, becomes second title. She's now second title, Okay. and then underneath that would be the children and all the rest of it. She has second title. And the marriage, the way the marriage is done is through affidavit. All right. So you do it through affidavit. The two families are there normally and to witness it. And the way it's actually done is you the man and the woman self marriage. They both enter into it and they sign this affidavit. Now, the affidavit is normally signed using gold ink because gold ink is the eternal signature because, you know, even life after death, they're still married and love is eternal and all the rest of it. So that is the affidavit. And then normally that affidavit is then logged into a family Bible as the marriage took place. That's how it's supposed to work. Today, 
completely different. Like we mentioned earlier, you have to apply for a license. You go, what do you mean? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> if you ask the woman and the woman says yes, who else have we got to ask? You know, ask the dad and the dad says yes. Well, that's it. Well, I'm asking the government, which is a corporation. So you're asking the government and you pay for it. Oh, so you pay. They grant the license. And then what happens is, is the, the two birth certificates are actually being joined. So the woman's birth certificate and the man's birth certificate is being joined and a brand new corporation is being created. And they will then create a marriage certificate. Do you notice the marriage certificate comes from government? The only person who can actually certify a marriage would be the man and the woman getting married because they have the authority to do it. So something else is going on. If, if the government is certifying something, you know, it's got nothing to do with you being married. Now, they securitize that. So that marriage certificate is then sold. There's a QCIP number attached to it. Um, you might look at your uh, marriage certificate. They might see a little tiny number in the corner running down. It's just tucked away. That is linked to a number that's linked to a ticket number that's linked to a QCIP number. And then that's how you find it. Uh, and that's bought and sold on stock market. You pay tax on that. But it's much, much worse than that. Because what's actually going on is because the man has done this, he said, he's, because he filled out the forms, he's done all this, he said he's not protecting his woman anymore. He's not protecting his children. And he's also agreed to all the rules and regulations. And this is why the government can come in and take the child. I mean, here's another thing. This is a trap. You go, mother and father goes into court and they fight over custody of the child. And you go, what? What do you mean custody? I can't have custody of the child if it's mine because it belongs to me. You can only have custody of something if it doesn't belong to you because you are the custodian. If you look, go and look this up. If you are cust custodian of something, you just have authority over it. You don't own it. So a natural father and a natural mother, they can't fight over custody because they both own the child. The, the child belongs to them. So you now know something else is going on. And of course, it's all corporate. And that's what's happening. So what's really going on in that courtroom is that the um, parents, which is a legal title, is fighting over the child, legal title, and they're actually fighting over the birth certificate of that child and who has possession of it or custody of it. That's what's actually going on in these courts. And the man is always decimated because he's always told you've got to pay child support, you've got to do this, attachment of earnings, because the man agreed. He filled out the mm. paperwork. He, he consented to all of this. All of this. So if you don't want any of that nightmare, and it destroys families, by the way, because the people who control the system, they use this to destroy families. And then they can take the child, put it into social services, and then that gets even worse. We all know about what's going on with social services and children. It's a horrendous system. So you want to get you want to get away from that. And if you want a true marriage, do it to affidavit. OK, and then they can't touch you. The state cannot touch you at that point because you have not taken on a state marriage. So hopefully that's cleared that up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> so so really, we're registering so many things. Everything that we really do now is register this, register that. Yes. Yes. And this is why Klaus Schwab can say you will own nothing and you'll be happy because we don't. Today, no one alive actually owns anything. All right, You don't own your house, you don't own your car, you don't own your business, you don't own your children. Here's a clue as well. If something has a serial number on it, that is a clue to telling you you don't own that. Because there will be a manufactured statement of origin somewhere out there with that certificate number, that serial number on it. That's the document that goes with your laptop, your TV, your whatever it is you bought, your private jet, whatever it is. If you don't hold that document, you can't prove you own it and you don't own it. Someone else does. And you're paying tax on that. Okay. Because if you look into the history of like the UK government and you will look into Gordon Brown when he was prime minister and he was selling off assets to protect the banking system in air quotes. And he sold a lot of gold. But not only did he sell a lot of gold, but he also sold off all these manufactured statement of origins for all the cars that were registered to the UK government or the DVLA. Sold them off. Worth billions. Because no one claimed them. No one even knew they existed. You bought your new car. You didn't know there was a manufactured statement of origin. You thought you were supposed to register it. No, you don't have to. That's a, not, It's not the law. You don't have to register anything. It's all corporate. It's all uh, by consent. 
you register it and you drive around and you don't realize where you're getting speeding tickets, parking tickets, and you've got tax to pay and MOTs. An MOT, by the way, is a tax inspection. You don't get it. Yeah, because you contracted. You gave your car away. Someone else owns it. So, yeah, you don't own your house. Look at your deed. People don't even know how deeds work. So they think, oh, I've got my deed. Oh, okay. Have you got a deed of property or have you got a deed of trust? And I guarantee you, you've got a deed of trust. And all you've got is a controlling interest. You've just got a controlling interest in a survey that someone else has a higher title than you. It's all about titles and placing you right at the bottom. Okay. I, I, let's touch on the uh, the kid thing as well. People don't understand because you're registering your kid, right? So you register your child. That means the state has first title. Remember I was talking about the man has first title, the wife has second title, right? That's how it's supposed to work. Okay. Well, these bureaucrats want to steal that first title. And the way they do it, they do it one way. So the government, it's a corporation, steals the first title when you register the child. But then what do you do? You then register the child with a doctor. Now the doctor gets second title. You've got third title. Yeah. Now the doctor can tell you what to do. So they've got the government at the top, then the doctor, and then you. You've got third title. But then guess what happens? You register the child with a school, don't you? Oopsie daisy. Now the headmaster gets third title. You've got fourth title. You're right down at the bottom. And this is why people, parents, are getting uh, fined when they take the child out of term time. They're calling it term time because it's the terms of the contract. You violated the terms of the contract, and now you're going to fine. Because the headmaster is above you because he's got third title, you've got fourth. You registered it. So... This is why I say you've got to learn what all this is about. You've got to learn how titles work and registering and contracts and trusts. So that's why no one owns anything. They've given it all away. Yeah. And it makes sense the way yeah. it's explained simply. Yeah, that's man, what I try and do. It, 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 it just makes sense. But sometimes, uh, but, but the thing about sometimes when you watch something like this for the first time, you'll think that it, that doesn't make sense because you've been in the box for yes. so long and that's the problem it takes a bit of time to get out of the box and understand what's really going on and when you do and you get that aha moment like what a lot of viewers that that, that watch my program they've got the aha moment at some stage about the monetary system yeah. and realize that it's a total scam like a ponzi scheme it is yeah they'll understand that the whole system is a scam all of it the whole, whole it. system yes all, which is great news, because when you figure it out, that means you can take everything back. You can take your car back, your house back, your children, everything, because it's a bluff. That's it. And the only reason, because people are still in that box, they think it's real. They think it's law. They think it's law. You've got to register your car. No, you don't. They think it's law. that You've got to register your children. No, you don't. It's like, oh, they think it, you, Les, is the law. No, it isn't. So they're trapped in the box. And until you get your mindset out of that box, you will always be trapped and you will always be a slave. And you've got to get your mind out. Once you get the sovereign mindset, we can work together, get our freedom back, and we can take everything back. I want my car back, my house back, everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it can be done. It, it can. can be done. Yeah, Put the it just takes in. a little bit of time. It takes yes. a little bit of time and learning. Absolutely. Good to do it. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> I know it's it's it is a lot for a lot of people to take in, but the facts are there, and people exactly. can go dig and 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 start learning about it. All you I do I mean? is point people to the path. I say, don't take my word for it. Here you go. Go on your own private journey. I mean, you're right. It's 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 a decision of the individual. They have to decide whether or not to go on this journey or not. And if they don't want to, fine. You're going to drown. Yeah. And, and, and for people that think that, oh, sure, that's the system. That's what a lot of people say. Oh, sure, what can I do about it? What can one person do about it? What can I do about it? Mm -hmm. What would you say to those people that, 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 that say that's just the way it is? Just, I mean, someone like that, I say, what can I do about it? What do you think I'm doing about it? I'm one person. I set up the Sovereign Project. I speak out. I write books. I give information for free. I'll do podcasts. If everybody did this, this entire system would come to an end by the week end. Done. Everyone's got a voice now. Everyone's got access to the internet. You can literally record yourself on a phone and throw it on a social media site. 
the average person has got what 500 a thousand facebook friends you've got a voice we've got mm. connections you know go go down to the pub talk to your friends and families if they don't some of them don't want to listen fine some will spread the word and that's how you do it but an individual can't topple the system can't be done because the system's way too big but if you've got a network of people all with the same mindset yes we can and that is what the sovereign fraternity is all about is to find people who are responsible intelligent and they've got a focused mind and they want to be free you can work with me okay that's what i'm trying to set up everybody can do something yeah yeah yeah, yeah definitely definitely and then uh about the 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 system itself i'm a firm believer that you need to have the mindset first to to help yourself yeah to help yourself before you think that the system can change so yes touch a little bit on that about sure on on that about your your, uh someone's Um, own journey you know helping themselves and figuring this out for themselves and they will feel a lot better. There'll be like a weight lifted off their off, off their shoulders once they they, they learn about this and yes. understand it. Not understand because I don't like saying understand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Learn appreciate about it. it. Learn I know about, about it. it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Absolutely right. Mindset is key uh, because there's too many people I talk to online. I try and help them and I can tell they're lost already. So I'll give you an example. So many people will say, oh, I've got a ULES ticket. How do I get out of paying it? And I say, you can't even ask that question. Because if you say, how do I get out of paying it? You've accepted the obligation. You should be paying it. You've lost the game. What you should be doing is going, hang on a minute. I don't remember the obligation here. When did I enter into a contract regarding this ULES ticket? Now you've got the right mindset. Now you can move forward. It's like the council tax thing, right? A lot of people are fighting council tax, but they think they're doing it all wrong because they're trying to find magic paperwork in the legal system. And they think, oh, if I get this magic piece of paperwork and I do this tick box, I don't have to pay council tax anymore. That's not how it works. What you should be doing is instead of having the mindset like, um, how do I get out of paying council tax? You should say, hang on a minute. The council is a corporation. How can it send me a bill if I did not even put an order in? Mindset. All right. So as long as you know this, if you know you are right and you know that you did not authorize any of these things, you did not consent to any of it, then you will realize none of it actually applies to you. So you've got to learn this. You're going to go, tax doesn't apply to me. Licensing doesn't apply to me. You know, go to wake up. I don't need a driver's license. I don't need a passport. All these things. Oh, another one is credit rating. The amount of people who say to me, oh, my credit rating is going to get damaged or whatever. And I go, hang on a minute. Is it your credit rating? When did you ask someone else to give you a credit rating? And when did you ask them if they would sell this data online to anybody who wants to buy it? I don't think you did. It's not your credit rating. Someone else without your authority has decided to give you a credit rating. That's the mindset for you. Right? Or or you fill in a form. Yes. <laughs> and you sent it into them. And, you sent and it that's in. how they get you. <laughs> Isn't it? True. True. And that's, that's exactly right. You filled the form in. <laughs> and you consented for, for your information to be put up there on that website for yes. everybody to see in the public. <laughs> and you signed the bottom of the letter and you did yes. a declaration probably. I declare <laughs> that this is correct. Yes. So you, you entrap yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and he said surname on the form and you filled it in and you put your national insurance number in and you filled it in. It's obvious. <laughs> you go, oh, people have got to wake up. All right, you do feel stupid because, you know, when you wake up to this, you go, oh, God, you know, why did I do that? But get past it. Don't let your pride get in the way. Just realize you got scammed like we all did. Let's deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it move on yeah move on, found move a way on. know thyself absolutely right know thyself and if you know thyself you'll know what you'll start feeling and as, as we said it's not for everybody if you can feel that there's something wrong out there you know and and, and you don't know in your heart or in your mind there's a difference between your your brain and your mind in your aura or your yep. gut feeling 
if you can feel there's something wrong, maybe it's time for you to learn about this and go on this journey. You're right. I mean, you've got your heart and your mind. So your heart's telling you there's something wrong and your mind is there to figure it out. So that's what that's supposed to do. It's supposed to figure this out for you. So, the, yeah, your heart's saying, hang on a minute, something's seriously wrong here. You've got to look into this and then do the work, do the research, learn this stuff. And there's a lot of people out there putting out good work. So yeah. it's not just the Sovereign Project stuff. We've got lots of people out there. I think uh, Callie Spell puts some good stuff out there. Peter Wilson puts some good stuff out there. You've got a whole load of different people out there putting some good information. And it's out there now. No one's got any excuse. Just do a bit of research. You can go on my website, which is the sovereignproject.live. There's free stuff there. We've got Sovereign Wiki. That's free. We've got a YouTube channel now with some videos on it for people. So it's easy to understand. It's free. There you go. No one's got the excuse like, oh, I've got no time. Well, you've got no time to watch a 20-minute video that I've done and explains this system. Come on. So, yeah. That's it. That's working. It's up to people now themselves. You know what I mean? So if people want to find you, we're going to link all your uh, uh, website into the, into the call. We're going to connect up all your social media platforms as well so people can just go and look and they can start researching. And go and look at the website. There's a lot of information there. Go and log in. Go and have a look. Yeah. Yep. yep. It's, it's all there. there. It's all Start there. Start reading. Start reading. And amazing. So, Pete, I don't like to go too long on yep. on 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 uh, meetings, but uh, uh, we definitely will catch up again, one hundred percent, because I think it'd be nice to uh, educate some of our listeners and get the word out there about how people can uh, protect their families. From yes. what is coming, yeah, and, and just coming. just to close off on it, what can you see is coming in the future from your work? Okay, just to round it off a little bit, and then we sure. can. It's a difficult one to say that I think this is a pivotal time in humanity or the history of mankind. It's going to go two ways. Either if enough people, if not enough people wake up, it's going to be slavery for everybody. It's going to be horrendous. Um, you know, eating crickets, you can't travel more than 15 minutes, cars gone, no privacy, horrendous, right? But if enough people do wake up and they are strong enough to stand up and say enough's enough, I'm not putting up with this, then we could actually break this system because this decade is when the system is most fragile because they're switching to a new monetary system. That's when it's so fragile. That's when we could break the chain. And if we can do that, we'll get free freedom, peace for all and you'll see a peaceful planet no more wars no more poverty it'll be unbelievable so it depends it takes enough people to stand up if enough people yeah. do it we get our freedom but but the thing about it is even if enough people don't do it right the people that know about this are going to set themselves free and that's yes. the thing we will be able to escape to a point um yes you should be to able a point to, yeah to, to a, a point. point not fully not but fully. to a point because you will always be you know you'll always have that sinking th feeling that it might knock on your door you can escape you can go underground you can um you know not be involved in the system cut yourself off all the rest of it you can even have an internal economy with a good network of friends and families um this is what the sovereign project's about um but yeah, the system. If the system carries on, it's always going to be a danger to us. It really will be. So, you, money will take you so far. Um, but I think you you'd need to be like a billionaire. You know, I don't. I, I even think that millionaires aren't going to survive. You know, if you're worth say 10, 20 million, you'll probably get steamrolled as well. They'll take your stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah. If, if if there's enough of us in the sovereign fraternity, then yeah, we could probably operate outside of the system even if the system continues and we, it would be a bit of a fight, but yeah, we could do it. We could do it. Um, that you'd, you'd have to be on your guard all the time. You know, you've got to know what you're talking about. You've got to be able to handle yourself and that sort of stuff. But yeah, we could. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Let's see what happens anyway, over time. Yes. Yeah. Over time. Let's see. But we've got to keep fighting. We'll, <laughs> we'll come back anyway again and we'll see Pete again on our show, maybe in a couple of months. And uh, thank you, Pete, for yeah. uh, coming on and taking the time to talk to us. Anytime, no worries. Thank you, thank you.